Hello gamers and welcome to Steel Division League Season 10, Jubilee Season, organized by Simulated Divisions League. And this is a match between Glogi and Dennis. Glogi is a duke in the Kingdom of the Noobs and Dennis is a knight. And um, yeah, Glogi playing uh, Tatra on balanced income. The map is Gora Calvaria, so a river map against 26th guard Dalkovi. So he's got all his Reckon stuff. He's got the expected spam units with Volkssturm and Landesschützen Ost. Other than the Panzergrands, Sturmpios in B, so no dedicated CTC in A. Pioneers in B, Landesführer B, very good. SS has Sturmgrenadier. Interestingly, he doesn't bring them in the SBKFZ. And then P grants in C, they are even single weathered in C phase. Leader in B and Batterieführer in A, that's a good call because this allows him to maximize um, his leaders. He now has um, eight leaders instead of just um, seven. Uh, Flag Feeling and Flag 41, Jagdpanzer, uh, two cards, the Krupp. And he decided to bring uh, the Sniper Feldjäger in B phase, interesting. So not to rush with them, but then again he plays uh, balanced, also has a commander. He will see some rocket artillery, no Wurfram. And then K35, they are pretty good, and Schwere Feldhaubitze in C. Um, and he will play the Dornier 217J2. It's not often, not that often seen on the battlefield. This is going to be interesting, also double vetted. Bringing it up to bad agility instead of very bad. Um, yeah, let's see how that goes. Then is Diderot with uh, 26 guards. Snipers in A and B. He also he went for V for victory, so I expect that um, Logi chose first. And no, I think that. Dennis picked the division, and then um, Glogi counterpicked Tatra with a balanced income, and then my guess is that the V for victory income is a counterpick because Dennis also counterpicked V for victory against me. In particular, the point advantage ain't that great, uh, but uh, for the A phase, I think can be a little bit helpful, and um, or to bring something like your commander and not suffer. But he doesn't even have a commander, so this will be very interesting. He brings the 20 point mortars, 800 meter range. Will call. You can't automate them with defensive fire though. There's the IS 1 Comrotti, and that's possibly why the group is on the battlefield. That's what he needs to crack open. Also, the KV 85 here um, with 175 millimeter front armor. We will see some artillery play here as well with the Andreyusha. We see SU-76 in B, uh, off-map in B, so um, RT heavy play here. Some AT units. I think this uh, 26 guard some months ago got buffed and got a second ZSU M15. My old um, 26 guards um, deck um, was um, cancelled basically um, because of price changes and stuff. So let's jump into the battle. Here we are on Gora Calvaria. On the left hand side, Knight Dennis Diderot with 26 guards in red. And on the right side, in blue, Duke Comrade Glogi. Uh, sorry, in, in red on the left hand side and on the right hand side in blue, Duke Comrade Glogi. On Gora Calvaria, it's usually a good idea to try to push across um, a bridge. I mean, it depends. On your deck of course but um, if you establish a, a foothold on the other side of the river you you could get an edge that helps throughout the game um, so this is a typical bridge you could push some this, the blue player often pushes into here the red player might might cross over here move into here um, a division with like um, Kirchen would work quite well here, I think, with all the Panzerschrecks. So with the range you get on the Panzerschrecks, you can um, 
You could dominate this against uh, support vehicles as well. And yeah, sometimes you see pushes into this town as well, but I think it's more often here, here, or eventually here. Um, with regard to the setup, there's no clear push, but considering that the Krupp and the Flag Feeling go here, I think that your Comrade Glogi actually expects the push to happen here, which is a typical push. You can then get through the forest to this flag. Reckon plane from the get-go by Dennis Diderot. And the flag feeling is on the wrong side of the map. Maybe one up here already. Yeah, he has to push into this area. This is all defensive, also with the PTRS against. There's a push on this, well, not a push, but a move on this island. Both players try to get on this island. And there's the intended push by, by Glogi. Sorry, the plane is by Diderot. And the push is by Glogi here and the flag feeling now paying off already it might even be able to shoot down the p2 just about not that was close and a flamethrower push is it going to be successful support up here by the spw231 as goes down to the m42 m42s are crucial maps like this good smoke play here by glogi uh, but it's only a tiny push to give um to give him something, to give uh, Diderot something to think about, I guess. Same here. The sniper doesn't make it, but the flamethrower, but it also stops everything. There's a wreck and tank here. Good positioning, actually. Now, this was successful. The three flamers made it across. Even surrendered the unit here. That might have been one of the PTRS. And really nasty is the positioning now. If he stays outside the house, everything that moves in will be forced out. Nothing happening here and here in the north. Logi knows something is coming. Good setup here. Including the mortar. There's a ZSU to support this, but I'm... I'm not quite sure that it would shoot that much. With the line of sight kv one e super slow at um, 35 kilometer road speed and now support mortars what's the plan here by dennis diderot does he want to take out positions here that he expects interestingly no positioning in the in the uh, house here he wants to cover the other side of the bridge actually is interesting very interesting play to remember this position i usually go into this house but this is actually the better position in the north we see some fighting in a few moments and there's the spw this is going to be nasty for every unit that moves there but the kv1 is on the way already also smoke could be used to conceal the troops. OB incoming. There's only a Volksturm and an MG. Also, very interesting MG pot positioning here. Not some somewhere like here. It's on this side actually. Very interesting. Jagdpanzer on the battlefield. More units supporting the north, including the leader. Mortar firing, yeah, at nothing. Stumoviki rocks should win this easily. Two models dropped each. And they are set on return fire and I think one of the PTRS or whatever it was used some smoke. Aufklärungs Panzer still alive, but actually has no line of sight. Even the HMG is on um, return fire. Very interesting play here. So he wants to manually switch it off and not reveal his position by accident. 
We see the first check. Um, captured vehicles, the Panzer 38. Push will be supported by the Jagdpanzer. There's the M42. There's nothing to take down the M42. Black feeling. Yeah, it's a bit too defensive here, so it won't shoot to the right side here. KV-1 will kill this. There's a Panzer Shrek lurking already. Good push here by... Um, by uh, Diderot. At the same time using the Sniper to, you know, keep an eye on the road there. They won't get flanked. Lots of mortars are in play now. But with 800 meter range... I'm not quite sure what their purpose is. Is it just to smoke stuff off if, it's, if it gets bad? Possibly. And there's the RS-1, one of the strengths of um, 26 is the early IS-2 Comrot IS-1 Comrotti with its uh, nice armor. And it's actually killing the MG-42. Uh, I think Logi is currently which was presumably spotted by the sniper because it was on return fire. Now, now moving it, I think he was occupied. Up here in the north, from our perspective. Panzerschreck now engaging the Guardia, that's not going to end well for the Panzerschreck. The Panzergrenadier to the rescue. With two MG-26s. Against two 28s, yeah, well. Good better suppression here for the Panzergrain. Volkssturm will help as well. Um, bomb drop here. More Sturm of Wiki Rocks. That is used now, moving move, now uh, being moved forward. This is still in a bit of a bad position. Maybe put it here. But it can shoot to the right a bit better. And we can hear some guns blazing. Now the mortars are going to shoot. Okay, this is now the 80mm mortars. Okay. At the Puck 40. And they might actually kill it. Looking good for Dennis Diderot so far. He also has a slight income advantage of uh, 25 points. Per minute. And we see the commander for Comrade Glogi. Check out the other game of Comrade, uh, or games of Comrade Glogi against um, Firetight. I've already casted them, so you can find them on my channel. Good positioning here, Flak feeling in a good position. It's building up. And he needs to hold and prevent the. Um, Double tick. This is a cheeky flag is, um, here with the channel, also revealing positions and stuff. Now uh, Diderot is crawling forward. Another Panzerschreck, but it won't do that much, I think. And now we will see the flag feeling. It's double vetted. Good. Take out the yak. Yes. Um, but the suppression, pre you know, gave that flag back, but the Volkssturm here will take it and it's back to 1311. The one flag being captured is this red flag, and that's a very typical capture. Air Force might be a way to win it back as well, if you combine it with um, artillery. This is a very aggressive place that I know with the forward um, AA by Dennis Diderot, but it's actually necessary. As you can see here, shooting at the plane already, denying it access to the area. If you just have your stuff here, it's not good enough. It will get shelled eventually and you die and lose what, what you've conquered. So you need to move forward your AA up here, in my opinion. Otherwise you will slowly but steadily um, 
played very poorly and lose. Dark Prince is still here, Pack 40 is still here, it did survive unscathed, more or less. Panzerwerper is entering the fray. Did it already shoot once? No, I don't think so. Why is it here? We'll monitor it. And there we see the Donier. Yeah, it's not even taking out the M42. Will it go down to the to the that, that SU? Maybe that extra agility just paid off. Wayne gets out. Only one ZSU, and he's calling an ISU. He's now trying to probably more secure this area more. Or where is he sending it to? No, he's actually trying to cross the bridge here. A very aggressive M42. Lots of mortar play. But as you can see, it's actually not really dropping models. It's a bit inefficient in that regard. Very good for suppression. Um, but with regards to killing this, it's a little bit uh, disappointing. But he did spot the Pack 43, presumably with the PE2. And there's a K35 on the battlefield. Now this is a very good tool. And he obviously doesn't know what's here. Is it a mortar? Well, he can maybe tell from the angle and the f rate of fire. Oh, a direct hit. That obviously helps. Dropped two models. But you can see you need like two, actually even more mortars without radio in order to even have a chance of killing that thing. Now down to one model. And there's a counter, manual counter battery here on the mortar. It is without shells, but it would be a nice kill. It's 60 points. And there's the snap already to support it. Might get a lucky hit here on the snap. No. And now the flak feeling is under pressure. Whoop is being moved with micro. And a bit unfortunate. Yeah, well, there's two more shots. And no, not enough splash. And one more is going to land. No. M42, very aggressive, and also the channels here managed to get through. The Pigrans should be able to take this out. And now, also, Glogi is moving forward with a Volkssturm. Retreat is the best cause of call of action. A pack or something would be needed here, or a tank. The Batterieführer a bit wasted, and he now needs some micro to prevent prevent a disaster. Almost in range, the K1. This is a very close, very close. I think it might get a kill. We'll see. Yes, oh, that hurts. Ooh. Oh, okay, that was a quick unload there. Maybe it was uh, the normal unload, I don't know. And there is the Andreyusha shooting at the cluster of tanks. And taking quite some damage. The Arctanza 4 is still in okay shape. M42 finishing off the SPW? No, just about not. Panzerwerfer still on the move. And the fire has been opened on this position. He wants to rescue his units. And there's already the snap for the Andreyusha, positioned well, so that it can move there. Oh, and the ISU has spotted the Puck 43. Why is it not firing back? Oh, he's, t he's shooting at the at the uh, ground and the splash damage is hurting the crook 
such a slow reload. There's no AA here. But then there, again, there's no, no tank. And now Glogi wants to push here. It's down 13 1. We are in B phase. So he now has the income advantage with regards to the minute income. And towards the end of B phase, he will have an income advantage. Or the and then it'll slowly tickle down again in C phase. Because it will be very difficult to push um, to push the double out of this forest. And this push is kind of working. There's a KV1 though and an IS1. And yeah. And with only the SPW left. Uh, it's obviously no frontline uh, change and what he now needs is uh, oh that's quite the impressive um, spam but it's the M42 will take out the expensive film grenadiers this is painful to watch it misses it's really it, it misses again and it hits oh and there's one comrade who starts shooting as well oh the smoke, there needs to be smoke. Very painful to watch. And the cheap landers should survive. Uh, the puck still alive. Yeah, and he unloads all the landers should in Aust. Maybe one under fire from the puck. It's not looking good. The Jagdpanzer vanquished. And there's the double tick for Dennis Diderot. He now makes his um, income advantage count in the middle of B phase. And this push kind of failed. And there's an IS-1 from Roddy. It's, a, it's an incredible positioning because if something comes across this will kill it, or shoot at it, but it can't be shot at from over here. Off map, by Diderot, defensive off map, he has, does not have much here, and he wants to stop the tanks, but it's not an emergency off map, so it's 35 seconds now still. But they will get caught in the crossfire here. There's an M42 gun as well. This will hold. And in the meantime, Dennis Diderot holds this with two cheap Chieno, Chieno Pichatniki. The Stuk not in immediate danger because there's no AT capabilities. There's a T34E. But he could get lucky and if it's not at point blank range, it won't be penetrated. Good call here to bring some landers shots to try to re-establish the front line. You see now two K-35s shooting at this position where the ZSU is. Good call. It does not seem to be supported by radio, so it's a bit difficult. And this is going for the M42. ZSU going down. Yes, not bad. 35 unit, point unit, this is 55, it's paying off already. Together with the other stra strafe up here. Lots of pioneers supported by Landesschutz and Ost. We'll try to win this back together with the Landesführer, I presume. Panzerwerfer will shoot. Shot already, but we will see where it sh will shoot. Ooh, yeah, the ZSU has not moved in quite some time. Very good target. Maybe a little bit far away, but could be enough. Ooh, and the K-35s are sh shooting in the general same direction, which might incentivize him to move. Will it shoot? There we go.
Ooh, almost. Moving back. Ah, that was close. It does have some armor, so... But it's damaged. But that's obviously not good enough. Very good off map now by Dennis Diderot. And in general, very good unit positioning by both players. As you did get a bounce from something. But the group won't just won't get line of sight because of this line of uh, trees here. SPW is, is probing. And there we've got the Henkel bomber incoming, targeting the ground here where the OB gun is, roughly. And 26 guards um, has a weakness, it's only got those two, basically two usable cards of AA, the ZSU's M15. And yeah, but then again, Petra does not have the strongest air force, and so far, Logi is making good use of it, but he is under heavy pressure. Going for the T-34E here. Such a cheap, nice tank. 90mm front armor, 100mm penetration. Two machine guns. Panzer, two Panzer threes in the fight against the T-34. They've got better penetration, but with their APCR around, and that's one kilometer range. Other than that, it's 100. And yeah, it's now moving forward. I mean, they can pen with 100, with a little bit of luck. The return fire play by both players is also quite good. Yeah, this was kind of stopped. The Landesführer even died. And here we see the Andreyusha firing again, trying to kill off the flak feeling, but it's falling back. So, another off map. There's no armor left here. Hook's still alive, but not well. It will die in a, with the next shot. Yeah, the off Panzer bounces. With 100mm penetration, it won't do much. Double tick is here. It's not looking good for Glogi, the Tetra player. He's falling back, that's a good call. But he could fall back the Krupp as well. I guess what he needs, and here it comes. Jagdpanzer in the north. You should be able to deal with the T-34 here. No infantry support here, it's a bit risky, but then again, there's nothing in here. But obviously he doesn't know that. Ooh, and there's a pen by the KB-85. But the Stuk can pen it. But the Stuk is dead. But at 1k range, it can be penned by the Panzer III as well. Multiple hits will be required, but there are two Panzer III's. This KV-85 KV should go down. But will it? The reload time is much better. And it worked out. But the ISU killed it with its AP shells. Doesn't have many. I think six. Yeah. Um... Great penetration. The ISU 152 is really, really good. It recently got a price buff and got cheaper. God knows why. I think it was. Uh, um, it's even better now than before, and I think it was a very viable option anyway. But there are obviously reasons that um, you know the whole meta thing in comparison with other units. This tiger is a little bit injured. It's showing sight, and also Dennis Diderot is snatching this flag. This needs to be activated. It could stop the whole thing. And it's not yet being activated. 
Call it to action, Logi. Reinforcements are coming. It's a one tiger, including. He needs the tiger to deal with the ISUs. But it's going to be super tough. Because double ISU, 152. 2k range, 165mm penetration against one tiger, which has 125 armor. It's not going to end well for the tiger. Panzerwerf are still alive, but not resupplied. A kingdom for a cluster plane. Yeah, I am. Hmm. Oh, look at that. The ISUs. Ooh. Off map goes down, but it used up its all its charges, I think. And the Yusha being resupplied. Dennis Diderot in a very good position now. Tiger arriving. What about the other Tiger? Okay, he redirected it, apparently. AB85 up there as well. Fifty-nine. The double tick is here. Logi urgently needs to stop the double tick. It seems unlikely to win back this flag with all this ISU support. It's a triple ISU, triple ISU against one tank, and it's not Wittmann. But second tank is coming, and it's a good thing that um, Logi is not rushing it forward. But poo. Jagdpanzer now could help as well, with 145 penetration. E2 incoming, but the flag filling is still good to go. Now with two Tigers and a Jagdpanzer, you might have a chance tends to hit is 30% and for the tiger it's 40 for the, not considering veterancy and for the Jagdpanzer it's 45. So if the ISU misses a little bit the tide could turn and Logi did win back this flag and this one that's quite good and this one and he's now pushing hard with Landesschützen Ost. This is a weak spot here in um, in uh, Dennis Diderot's defense, but he knows it. He's positioning a a um, AB eighty five, and then we get the Andrush Andreyusha on the flag feeling, not super accurate, and the flag feeling survives. Ooh, we see the engagement here against the ISUs, and he's withdrawing. A one tiger, he is scaring back that, and Diderot knows he's about to win. He does not need to risk his units. He's bringing up two KV-85s here to help dealing with the Tiger. This is very cheeky play here down here. Now what will happen here? This is the battle. A bit like Kursk. And there's the first kill against the ISU. OB fighting as well here with heat shells. Bouncing. 90 penetration. It's obviously not going to penetrate the uh, Jagd Panzer. But it's the only casualty so far, one, one ISU 152. Tiger a little bit stressed out, but other than that, fine. Jagd, this Tiger not moving forward, this one either. It's dishing it out with, the, with this. Oh, and the KB-85 is about to go down to the Tiger. Body penetration, rate of fire 6, Tiger has 5, I think, yes. Price difference, 130 against 105. You know, seriously, why is this tank so much cheaper? But it only has... Yeah, it has less range. I usually don't play Soviet tank decks that much. Or, like, tankish decks with KV-85s. Two ISUs still alive. 
and two Tigers, the Jagdpanzer. One ISU 152 went down and two KV-85s. What an engagement. At the same time, both players are fighting hard here in the north as well. All the small vehicles here, all the, the, the remaining... Well, it actually died before. There's no replacement here. Uh, with regards to armor, there's the supply vehicle for the Panzerwerfer. Interestingly, why is it not single vetted by the commander? Jagdpanzer against T-34 should win. 14-10, 3 minutes 15 left. Driver knocked out, doesn't matter. And a kill, one shot kill. This out of ammo, it is out of ammo, look at that. Ooh. And the push in the center here with all those cheap Landesschützen Ohrs. He's really giving um, Dennis Diderot some homework, but he is 15-9 in the lead. What a game. Now the Tiger push. Against the M42 gun. It could get side-shotted. It looks bad here. This, ooh. High risk of getting side-shotted. Ooh, that could be a side-shot. But it's a miss. And the bounce. What's the side armor? Is it 90? It's only 85, but yeah. Okay, it's down. Loader knocked out. The Tiger almost going for a swim here. Look at that. Hiding in the water. Lots of bounces. The Aufklärung Sponsor is very much needed now. Some infantry support is needed. Volkssturm is coming. And... He, uh, it's 23 seconds left, 14-10, 45 seconds left, a, fl a flag's flipped, this flag is about to flip, this flag is about to flip, and this flag is about to flip. And the door, the Donya, the 55-point unit that I mocked at the beginning a little bit, is crucial in this push in taking out this um, M42 gun that would have immediately killed the Aufklärungspanzer and maybe more. It would have had the Volkssturm um, trucks for breakfast. And there's the 12-12. This will be the 13-11. Glogi starts ticking. Um, the Dennis Diderot with basically like one second left of uh, <laughs> points. And it is because he managed to take back these flags. This is an incredible performance, 12-12. Dennis Diderot needs to win one flag for like one or two or three or five seconds. Now the Dornier even engaging the IL-2. The Dornier pilot is on fire, as is Glogi. What will Dennis Diderot um, do to answer this? He will try to take down the Henkel. The Flak 41 missing. Very, very poor. Flak because it's shooting at the tank, I think. But the Flak feeling still alive. It survived one or two, at least, Andreyusha strikes. Glow even had the money to invest into another artillery piece, and he now starts shelling the Andreyusha. Huh. Maybe with counter battery, maybe manually, I don't know. But, and it's 12 12. He needs to hold this. Two tigers are here to save the day. The Landes the Volkssturm uh, is leading the access to victory, maybe. At least it's leading it to not losing. The Dornier is going again. This time at the. Well, at nothing, because he lost line of sight. But still, it, it will eat up all that's left of the possibly remaining uh, AA. And there's no AA left on the... Yeah. Holy shit. And the AA piece here is going to get down. The Volkssturm with their um, Panzerfaust will, will take it out. And the Sturmowiki rocks won't be enough to turn the tide here. There's now even the Panzerwerfer expecting some units here, firing at it. Good call here. And 1311 is real. Very aggressive push now. The ISU here went down. The Jagdpanzer deployed on the bridgehead. On the yet to be established bridgehead. It's only the front line that's kind of established. Donier looking for prey, not finding it. A new set as you is on the, on the field. It's the only one. It won't be enough. Andreyusha went down to the K-35s. The Aufklärer going for a rush 
Maybe. I thought he would rush over. This is entirely defenseless. Logi could just send some trucks over here. Go, send your SPW. What a match. It was basically all to one second. Snap goes down. It was full with ammunition and exploded. The tiger now reached the other side in a in an unbelievable Whitman style. There was the 15, 10, 15, um, 9 for a second, I believe. And the Panzer 3 will support the push. Two Panzer 3s here. Jagd Panzers and Ofgren's Panzer to hold the line. Good com combination. Maybe a little bit too close to the forest for my taste, but still incredibly good. The KB-1 is here. Lots of Reckon planes still ab all, um, flying about. And there's the ZSU. Will he find an answer to the ZSU? Presumably. No, the artillery is going for the KV-1. He used the Reckon provided, or the radio provided by the Fokker Wolf. Fantastic. And we see two Stucks. And there's another Stuck. And the Landesführer. Units are pouring in and... And even though... Then Stilero has a slight point advantage with regards to income. He's got a tiger on the loo on the loose. Sniper's trying to give some vision. They are T-34s. They won't be able to deal with the tiger. SPW-222s are so good. Look at this. He's now pushing here. The Panzer III capturing two flags. He did lose this flag though, so this counter push kind of worked. And the tanks are behind the enemy lines. Tanks operate tanks here infiltrating. Um, infiltrating the um and then Stidero's back lines. Tracks broken. It's, and yeah, it will take down the oh and the TV1 misses. The APCR shells doing a fantastic job here of whittling down the KV1. But there's a bounce. Jagdpanzer 4 not quite aiming. And now we are back to 50mm AP shells that will bounce. Oh yeah, well, at least they did bounce. And again, something wrong with the Jagdpanzer. Now it's trying to shoot. And it saves the tiny tank. Panzer 3 push working. Now Panzerwerpers shooting at the enemy location where the KV-1 is. Jagdpanzer 2 to the support. The T-34s managed to stress out the um, the Tiger. T-34 going down. Tiger is um, back to the fight already. Shelling the bridge with smoke here. It won't help. There's nothing left here. Everything is here. Now the Stukes are brave, pushing across. Logi knows that if he goes behind one flag for just a second, he will lose the game. This man has no, has like balls of steel. And he grabs his flag. There's only one T-34 left. The Pigran could go through the forest on the hunt. Well, maybe not quite, but now he could. T-34 moving forward in a desperate attempt by Dennis Diderot to win back the flag. Will the Pigran get into position or will the Jagdpanzer have something to eat? Pigran needs to go into the forest. Why is it not going into the forest? Yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate. It could have gone into the forest and then Maybe he expected some something in there. He's, it's got the MG, so it could have shot in the forest. IL-2 being stopped. I think it killed one of the Panzer 3s here. That did the sneaky double flag. It's, it's only two units left here. And the mortar without MG shells. And now, what a surprise. Imagine this is your front and then suddenly you get a Jagdpanzer 4 and an Aufgrenzpanzer coming across. Nonetheless, the Jagdpanzer goes down to the T-34. And yeah, the Aufgrenzpanzer as well. The planes here hunting the IL-2. The ZSU already went down, left it. 
I don't think there will be more air defense. 16 8, the double tick is here. 39 minutes played, what a game. Dawn Yen now even struggling to find a viable target. But it's going to be attacked by the Ak No, it's not. Okay. He's going back to go for the fighter. The fighter might go down. Oh no, it won't. The flag feeling in a good spot here. And the uh, fantastic air mic right now by both players. Heading on the IL2. IL2 obviously with, with very good resilience. Yeah, bombs are deactivated. Good micro. But um, doesn't help. No, the Donier turning back. The 55 point Donier. The flying break. Yeah, it won't catch up. It won't. It, uh, but the BF 109 does the job. And it will get this kill as well. Fantastic airplane. Now we see the ASU 85 and the Krisov dude. Will he turn the tide? There are two sh sh threes here. There's a ton of infantry. I don't see how uh, Dennis Diderot uh, can win this back. Suddenly all of the battlefield is covered in blue. How is that even possible? Excellent timing for the counter push. And um, spamming Tatra in C phase is also quite special. I don't think it was the game plan to, you know, get that far behind and you know not win this back up here, but um, man, what a what a turnaround of this game! And this is game one. There will be a second game, twenty one to three. It's a quadruple tick. Two minutes. And Glogi was at like one second or maybe two or three. I don't know. Twenty four. The mortar trying to hold the line. Fighting the Volkssturm. This one here safeguarding the bridge. Air yeah, roaming around. The Luftwaffe is um, all well. Our men are about to collapse. It's 22. Two. Holy crap. I did not see that coming. Going for the T-34E. Losing the sight. Uncontested uh, sky. 22 2. 1 minute 27 left. Poor Krishov. He also would have preferred to stay at home now. But he's on a suicide mission. But then again, all the tigers and so on have been uh, taken out here. So. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to the details here. But, more for the greater picture. Apologies for that. I think we should have not missed the two tiger kills. Bischoff already super damaged by something, by the Jagdpanzer here. Ooh. And then there's the bomb load. And Krishov goes home in the coffin. Poor guy. Aces tend to die. Even in the last minutes or seconds of the war. Puck 40 now here supporting the anti-infantry fight, supporting the fight against the SU-85. 23-1. Uh, yeah, but uh, the Sturm Grenadier, well, no, you can't take that out. There's the different SS dude that has Panzer Faust. One T-34 here, and that's it. GG. GG, well played to both players. Very good. A play by Dennis Diderot and then an absolutely incredible um, counter push last second counter push with Landesschützen and uh, Tigers and Volkssturm supported by artillery by um, Comrade Glogi. Um, Comrade Glogi already a veteran I mean he's a good player look at that win ratio in multiplayer really good he also plays both sides very versatile player and I, I can't see Dennis Diderot but he's also very very experienced a very good player so uh, defeating him means quite a bit 
And yeah, congratulations to both players for delivering such a fight. Congratulations to Glogi, commiserations to Didor. And then we see here M42, KV1E. Don't rocks, obviously, in Green Forest, they are beasts. This KV1 also. IS1 Comrotti couldn't do that much. 85 did okay ish. ISU, this one was quite nice. 34, I think that was in the north, the push towards the end. And Christoph took out two units as well. The Krupp, yeah, didn't quite fulfill its expected role, but it was definitely important to bring it. Took three. And it's a typical spot for the push, so I think he expected an, I, an IS-1 push there. A35T. I mean, that's quite good. And that's just the kills. Luck. Tiger E. Black Panzer Tiger E. Those hero Tiger E's here. Albrecht and Dorn. Took three. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic uh, game. Thanks a lot for watching. Until then, bye for now.